I'm Robert Amos. This exhibition is called Anthony Thorne, Alchemist. I've known Anthony for many years now and uh, reviewed many of the exhibitions he's had here in Victoria. Uh, but my uh, visits with him have become more frequent lately. Uh, Anthony's uh, not in very good health and he's uh, really looking, looking to the end of things. It's a good time to go and visit someone, for sure. He's a very clear in his mind, as he always has been, very stubborn and determined and intelligent, opinionated. But, uh, so we're sitting and talking, and uh, by the way, I think he's a wonderful artist. He's a unique type of artist, but has given his whole life to making beautiful things. So a lot of people, well, he's made and signed more than 1,200 artworks in his studio, and they're all gone. People took them away, <laughs> uh, with the exception of these ones, which he has made more recently, and also some which he's treasured in his studio for many years. So we were sitting talking about this, and Anthony says to me, you know, I, if all this work here ends up in my estate, it's going to be very confusing for the estate to figure out how to price it and how to sell it and what to do with it. He said it would be so much simpler if we sold it now. So he and I started talking about what, if he could have a show of it. He, he's at home. He can't put on a show. But we got talking about it. And I suggested that this room in a Spencer Mansion would be a great place for a show. Art rental and sales in the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria on Moss Street. And I thought the Art Gallery would look very kindly on his request to have a show in fairly short order uh, because he's recently given them the biggest financial gift they've ever received, a gift of $2.67 million to this gallery to start its next phase building campaign. So, of course, he had the attention of the director, and uh, this space was available a few months later, and so Tony and I got together and uh, prepared the exhibition. He gave me carte blanche to show anything he had in his home. And uh, the, the amount that he had is just about the amount which will fit in this room. So welcome to the show. One thing about Anthony Thorne as an artist is he works in a number of different ways. Uh, I'm going to show you a few that uh, have uh, sort of chronological references. This was where he began as a middle period, later style. But uh, truly, he has continued to work in these styles throughout. He's different times, different uh, effects. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is called Two Princesses and a Jester. It was a painting that uh, Thorne created in Mexico in 1956. He's from uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, uh, took a university degree in Chicago, I went to study in Paris. He studied at the uh, Institute of uh, Sacred Art. His uh, paintings have a kind of a stained glass feel to them. Uh, subsequently, he went and uh, studied and lived and worked and exhibited in Mexico for a few years in the mid-1950s. This rather cubist painting is one of those. Uh, the largest part of uh, Thorne's professional career was spent in a Toronto uh, area where he uh, uh, made his way in the uh, abstract and expressionist uh, way of painting, uh, had exhibits in uh, Toronto and Montreal and sold very well. Uh, a lot of his paintings have uh, gone into uh, homes across Canada. It's a kind of an abstraction, but he's working with black enamel on uh, canvas and linen, 
uh, and then uh, staining in uh, oil colors around it. They have quite a quite a glow. This painting has a kind of a calligraphic reference. So uh, Thorne uh, lived and uh, studied in Japan for a couple of years and has been very interested in uh, Japanese art throughout his life. You can see the kind of uh, brush-drawn ink painting influence here. Let's take a look at this one while we're here. This is uh, the next painting uh, is one which has that similar structure of the abstract painting, but is in fact, uh, the background is done with gold leaf. It immediately calls into mind Gustav Klimt, the Austrian secessionist painter, um, artist who was great influence inspiration on Thorne. When Tony got to the West Coast in 1980, discovered and moved into Victoria, his uh, artwork really uh, went through a change. Uh, at that point in his life, he was uh, 60 years old. He, he uh, no longer needed to uh, earn a living, having uh, inherited uh, sufficiency from his family. And uh, his painting and creatish Creativity became much more hermetic. He was really burrowing down into the roots of his own uh, philosophy and uh, uh, spiritual uh, thoughts, and his materials changed too. Here he's working with a molded tablet of carved gesso, which is a marble dust, really, and he has carved into it with a flexible shaft tool and dental implements and then gilded it. In this case, with, uh, I don't know, 24 karat gold, uh, other types of gold, and a palladium, uh, silver material, which doesn't tarnish. Sort of uh, thoughts of uh, Jack Wise come to mind here. Uh, the uh, mystic effect is uh, not far away, the Pat Martin Bates world. One thing I really love about Anthony Thorne's painting, uh, whenever I've been to one of his exhibitions, there's a range of different kind of work, but he always favors us with at least one very beautiful floral study. He loves to paint geraniums best, although he does a good job on chrysanthemums too. But uh, here's a Chinese pot with a geranium in it. It's very patiently crafted and well-studied technique of oil glazes, masterful draftsmanship, impeccable taste in the composition. It, they are uh, really a treasure. So this exhibition, you can see, is a kind of uh, retrospective look at the uh, life and work of Anthony Thorne. This weekend, we'll be celebrating with the wonderful look at the artwork at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria.